I haven't got like one person here. What the heck's going on? What's up, Jay Basson? Waiting for everybody to get in here. That includes the Ten Horse Monty that's not, well, he's here, but he's not at the pond. He should be coming up here shortly. What's up, Steven? Like I said, we're, we're just waiting on Ten Horse Monty. It's, you know, his live stream. You know, thought he'd be here, but uh, he's stuck trying to get some of them greenbacks down at my pond right now. What's up, Mr. Daniels? I kind of figured we'd have uh, quite a few people in here this evening, being the coronavirus is going irate with everybody and getting stuck in their house and everything else. So... Oh, let's see. Oh, here he comes. He's walking up the yard now. So I should have spun the camera on and you guys could have watched him fish live. Which we're, we might have to do that this summer. As long as we can get close enough to the house to have Wi Fi to have a good signal to do it. Jay says he has plenty of time to kill. Are you off work, Jay? So I know quite a few people, man. It just it sucks people being out of work and everything else. But I don't know what's going on. I thought we would be some of the first people out of work, but I deal with stone, so I didn't see stone as a necess necessity by any means. But could be wrong. What's up, Isaac? Several. So, Hopefully when Gabe gets up here, we get a few more people rolling in. Like I said, I figured there'd be all kinds of people be off work tonight and looking for something to do. Some jobs have been shut down. Yeah, it's like I said, I, I see a little bit of it, you know, here and there around where I live, you know, Missouri, but um, I know Illinois, man, they got hit hard. They shut a bunch of that down. I think St. Louis County, you know, which is about an hour north of us, um, you know, they were all pretty much on shutdown too. So, so it's been stuck in the house or is in the big rig. I need to go go rip some lips. Yeah, definitely, dude. Hopefully you got a hopefully you got a travel rod to take along with you. We can stop at the local lakes around wherever you're traveling. That's why I could never be a truck driver. Ooh. Oh. Like I said, he's he's almost in here. Get some good topics going. Is anybody seeing any good spring bass this one yet? I know Mox and Lurus said that uh, they were starting to get the swim jig bite down there. So I would think after this week, I'd be willing to bet we're probably going to start seeing some really good fishing coming. Finally getting, I think we're supposed to be in like the 60s and 70s all week long. Got a few thunderstorms here and there rolling through, but I mean, other than that, it's going to be pretty dang, pretty dang good weather. So I look forward to get a lot better. So what lakes are still allowing fishing boats to use ramps? Rick, there's not many of them, really. Um, I know Illinois, most of them are shut down. Any state-owned, government-owned ones, um, they've shut a lot of them down. Now, I have heard there's a few of them that are still open, though, from what I understand. Um, I know I think I seen on Facebook today something about uh, somebody put out some fake news about the IDNR putting out that they were shutting down the ramps and this and that. And then somebody come back and said, no, that was a complete lie. They're open. So I, I don't know. I would say before you go anywhere, I would just call your state department and find out, to be honest, before you get hung out there and get a ticket for it. T. Harris, what's going on, man? So buck bass are in. Haven't seen the females. Well, that's all right. At least you know it's coming. Like I said, we haven't even hit that part yet. Um, Gabe said yesterday that he was, he was hitting them on the, uh, on the quarter ounce swim jig. So it's a coming. It's just a kind of here and there right now. I know we were just fishing down the pond. And, you know, the problem with the pond fishing is, you know, the temperature can go way down or go way up in just a day. So 
it really makes a big difference. It makes it hard to catch some of them bass sometimes. You get a good hot day, they'll bite like crazy, and the next day you get that cold front like we did this past Friday, and it just shut them down. They haven't been back since yet. So I would say by the end of this week, though, they'll really be on. Steve says, dedicated route, no time to stop. Ooh, that's not good. What's up, Aaron? Robert Daniels? I got the info on my Facebook page about the lakes. Yeah. Yeah, it's – like I said, it's – I don't know who to trust anymore with that Facebook page. Like I said, I've got a buddy that went over to uh, Kincaid. He said it was open. He said he fished. So, I don't know. I've I've kind of heard both ways. So, we can't bottle enough water to Aquafina. Oh, when was Aquafina that? Aquafina brand to keep up. When did you yeah, go to Kincaid? Kincaid? Just recently? Yeah. This weekend? Yeah. Huh. So, he said he was over the Paul Ice Trail. Okay. Well, Ron, Ron said that Egypt's open. It is open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's yep. no tournaments, right? No tournaments. Right. But the, but the ramp is open. Yeah. Aaron <laughs> says backyard bass has a pond. Fishing tournament at his house. <laughs> Dude, I tell you what, we'll do that. You just bring enough grease, we can do a fish fry afterwards. It's pretty tough down there at the old backyard bass and pond. I got two little bluegill bites. That was it. Yeah. Just a little. It's, it's tough. I, it. I tell people that. And it's just like, it's so hard. Like I was telling you a while ago with the water temperatures, they're constantly up and down with the pond. Yeah. It changes too much. They were uh, they were sipping though in the little bluegill. You can hear yeah, them you can hear them sucking while. every once yeah, in a while. It's yep. kind of coming to life slowly. Yeah, like I said, by the end of the week, I bet it's going to be. I would say probably we got what, a thunderstorm tomorrow. Wednesday, Thursday is supposed to be like seventy seven. Yeah, I'm off so, Thursday. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Uh, I got new. I got my carpet on my boat. It's drying right now. So well, Thursday, I'll be maybe. stuck at work. <laughs> I'll send some pictures. Hopefully, I'll come home at lunch and. Go for a little bit, I right. guess. Yeah, I was talking to a uh, – you're talking about jobs being shut down on here. And I was talking to a uh, dental hygienist on my route today. and She said today was her last day. She filed really? for unemployment. Um, all the all the dentists are just – it's like emergency only right now. Well, I, which, can, I can see that. I mean, that's respiratory right in yeah. your face there, so I wouldn't want to shut this door. Oh, yeah. We could do that, fish in the morning, fish fry, and beer later that day. Sounds like a plan. Now, Aaron mentioned beer, so he's the one that's got to bring it. Yep, exactly. That's how that goes. First one to mention brings it. Thanks, Aaron. Moccasin. Uh, I was catching them on your swim jig yesterday. That black grape quarter ounce with a green pumpkin menace. It was uh, it was getting a job done. I had, had fun little, about 45 minutes at the local park there. Caught about, I think caught about 14 fish and missed quite a few too. How, how big is that lake? I think it's seven acres. So like, yeah, well, but it sits just, right out in a field. It sits right out in the open. So I'm sure it's a lot warmer than your pond. Yeah, I'm there. sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was still chilly, but the fish were right on, I mean, right on the bank in about a foot or less of water. And that, you know, that's one thing that kind of hurts my pond a little bit is Sun coming up over here. It's got all the trees blocking it that way. Yeah. Middle of the day, it's okay. But as soon as it gets back over here, it's got the rest of the trees. So yeah, it just it's just got that feeling like it's down in a holler. Yeah. Uh, hollow or holler, or whatever. Yep. Yeah, but light will work, Aaron. I ain't picky when it's free. As long as you ain't bringing no stag over. Oof. I, I did find some chicken breasts finally, though. I haven't went and got them chicken? yet. Chicken? Yeah, chicken breasts has been hard yeah. to find. I mean, really? I, yeah. We found a bunch of them yesterday. We went down to Cape and went shopping a little bit. Well, I've been four That's times. The only thing we have seen is chicken. Really? Yeah. I, I, four times I was looking for it and they were sold out of it. You could find frozen stuff, but you couldn't find like the big family packs. Right. And supposedly well, Food Giant has some in. Today. That's what we were seeing too, the frozen ones. Yeah. That's like that's a staple in my house. I always take like a five pounds of chicken breast and I I bake them and put them in a big ziploc bag and, and eat off of them all week long. Yeah. Just so it's been it's been pretty crazy. I told the guys I figured tonight with everybody being home and off work and this and that we'd have a good live stream and boy it's like fourteen tonight. I don't know what's going on. People are probably still outside. Yeah, 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 I don't even think about that. Yeah, it's still bottled up. up. It's still, it's pretty nice out there. It's actually it was fifty five degrees when I left my house, and then it's forty eight up here. So it's colder up here. Obviously, the I guess the sun. The it's sun it's my up. hole that I live in. That's what it is. Yeah, it must be. <laughs> I'm catching my bluegill swim jig lately. Lake down here has been busy. Hmm. Well, I'm sure they've got. 
Uh, Moxon, what's your what are your water temps down there? I'll say you guys are probably hitting sixties, aren't you? T. Harris said, "Did someone say you can't have tournaments on Egypt?" I don't think you can. Um, um, as far as I know, there can't be more than a group of ten right now, from what I understand. Yeah, they're they're canceling everything. I know all the tours are pushed back through through mid April. I got a BFL and I think April eighteenth at Table Rock, so I'm kind of seeing how that's going to play out. You know, it's weird you say that because the west side of Missouri hasn't been – hasn't you haven't heard much out of it. I know we've got a tournament at Lake of the Ozarks here in two weeks, and we called down there, and it's still all good. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it works out for you guys too. But they haven't called the big bass bash off over there either, and that's the week that's three they're, weeks away. Yeah, they're going to wait until the last minute on that. That's, yeah. that's a big draw for people. I mean, that's a resorts, restaurants, mm -hmm. gas, all that. They, they that brings in a lot of revenue. So hopefully, geez, I hate to even say how long this is going to take. Nobody really knows. But I think it's just kind of a week by week thing. But Aaron says uh, Saturday my bite was a white skirted spinner bait in brown and orange HD crawl. Yeah, I, um, the chatter bait's been working pretty good around here. Um, that white chatterbait. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you could do the same thing. I caught some fish on a white spinnerbait the other day. I had a white, white and silver chatterbait. So yeah. I'm using yeah. pretty good with it. Just something you can you can move real slow. Like the other day when I was fishing, I had that quarter round swim jig with that with that menace trailer on there. And uh the reason I missed a lot of the bites, well, one was they were just kind of grabbing, just kind of sneaking up and grabbing the back of it. And I, I actually witnessed them doing that because they were so shallow I could see them come out from the rocks. But I was having to high stick and it, man, it's hard to hook a fish on a swim <laughs> when you're high sticking just because they were so shallow. And that's the only way I could keep it from getting in the, in the moss. There's all kinds of, you like, know, that's, grass. that's how you end up like that. Dang. That was your favorite rod too. Yeah, it? it was. <laughs> I still don't know what happened, but Dang, you broke it way off. Yeah. Like I said, it was just trying to pop it out of grass and it did that i'm oh. sure if you call boyd duckett he will gladly replace that for free he's a nice guy i'm sure if i called boyd duckett he'd have me arrested <laughs> <laughs> he'd go, how, how did you get this number <laughs> yeah. let's see moxon says uh he's in the low 60s about a week away yeah it man it's been close and then it gets cold again it's been close and it gets cold again so i it, I today's the first day where I, it felt like it was like super close to me for some reason. I don't know why. I just I just had this feeling like it was. Well, like I said, I think by the end of the week, I think we're going to be. Yeah. And I mean, I know like Moxie was saying, it's going to be wide open, you know, and he's going to get into a really good bite. But like even up here, you know, everybody always says 50 is that number, that magic, that magic number, which I agree it is to a certain extent. But if you've got the weather to go along with it, that bite blows wide open. And it's it's a lot of fun. We need the warm nights. Yep. And and I think tonight is supposed to stay fairly warm. I think in the 40s tonight. Right. And then Wednesday is supposed to be a little bit warmer. And you're going to yep. have Thursday up in the 70s. Yeah. As long as it stays up in the 40s at night, I mean, that's that makes a big difference. Yeah. But this dropping down to 30s and hell over the weekend, we had sleep. Yeah. It was sleeping on me here at the pond. I was like, what in the world? Yeah. Yesterday was cold in, in the morning for sure. I was out in the garage changing the battery in my wife's Subaru and it was like 42 degrees. I was it was chilly. It was rainy, real humid. Let's see. Water tips in South Georgia, low 70s already. Hmm. I don't know if I don't want to jump up that quick. I like that. I like that 60. About 60 degree mark. <laughs> yeah, I, I was telling somebody earlier today, I like this time of year because it's still cold enough that it keeps a lot of people off the water. And then here, once it once we start consistently having 70 degree, you know, air temps, yeah. everybody starts coming out of the woodwork and then the, the lakes get a lot more crowded. So that's that's one of the things. It's almost depressing to me if you fish all winter long, you get these lakes and there's not I mean Egypt has a lot of a lot of boats on oh, it. Yeah, but that's probably one of the most pressured lakes around here. Yeah, if you go to some of these, you know, not so popular lakes, you know, you, a lot of times there's just you and maybe one or two other people there. And then as the water starts warming up, it starts getting crowded. So it's I kind of go through like a little bit of winter withdrawal. I mean, I sure. I mean, I appreciate the warm temperatures, but I just don't like all the traffic. Right. You know, it's like my little lake, local lake here. You know, you've seen it's not very big, but 
like you said, you hit those nice days in that place, the whole bank is crowded. Yes. Which don't get me wrong, I, I tell people all the time, go fish and get out, you know, enjoy it. But like you said, then you gotta put up with everything. Mm-hmm. So half your spots are going to fish, and then you're you know, you've worked your way to fish these certain spots and then you go there and there's somebody there every time. Yeah. And it like like Cedar's not too crazy. I mean, you get a lot of people on there, but people are pretty respectful. You know, the, the bigger the lake, the more goofballs you see out there. Um, that's the, that's the things that I don't look forward to. It's really the pleasure boaters and the, and the jet skis and stuff right now. You don't have to deal deal with those, but it won't be long, you know, and they'll be yeah. cutting in between you and the bank and, you know, just coming in and shutting down especially, and blowing a big wake. Yeah. Especially if you're somebody that fishes offshore. That's yes. the worst. Yes. Drives I, me nuts. I dealt with that plenty. Well, matter of fact, it was last or no, it wasn't last year. Maybe it was two years ago. We were fishing at Lake of the Ozarks. So I was fishing a point that came way out towards the middle of the lake. And there was a kids on jet skis. And this is in the beginning of April. It was not warm. And we both looked at each other like, these guys are nuts. I mean, it was like maybe 40-something degrees out, maybe 50, you know, at the high for the day. And they were out riding jet skis back and forth. I saw a guy, two, it must have been a like a dad and his daughter and then maybe – and his buddy or something. This was on Kincaid, like in late December, and she was she was water skiing. She had the full wetsuit on, but I mean the water temp is like forty two degrees. That's nuts. Yeah, that's absolutely. I, I just kind of took my hat off. I'm like, well, if you're gonna do it, that's pretty ballsy. God, thank. Cut my lip while I go on some fluorocarbon. Uh, you're supposed <laughs> right to have cutters. <laughs> yeah, I was in a hurry and I went like this, and I caught my corner of my lip. <laughs> but speaking of which, you were talking about wetsuit. I was telling in my video the other day about them gloves I got. You know, they were cheap $12 gloves from Academy. They were neoprene. And that day I fished the tournament over to Egypt. It rained all, you know, it rained all day. My hands were soaking wet, but never, ever got cold. You took them things off and your hands were freezing. So I put them back on soaking wet. It sucked putting them back on, but I mean, huh. they were warm. I was, I couldn't believe it. They worked really good. I, I had the same deal happen at uh, Lake of the Ozarks um, with this uh, micro fleece glove. It was wet, but it was keeping my hand warm. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing you just said. It, it was, yeah, it's it weird. weird. I mean, it was my hands. I mean, if they were dry, they would have been sweaty, I bet. Mm-hmm. They were that warm. I couldn't believe it. But the, the thing that aggravated me, and I explained in my last video, is it's got the finger thing that you pull off and then it velcroed back here. But every time you reel, it catches that top reel. Every time it just sits, I'm like, uh, finally, I got aggravated and took it off. But <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to make a perfect project. I've seen, uh, what was up here? Robert has said that he also heard that no more than 10 boats or trucks of boats at the boat ramp, too. Huh. I, I haven't heard that one yet. Yeah, he said he just heard it. He said, who knows, but. Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, it's it's tricky. I mean, I know a lot of restaurants. There's still restaurants in, in our area that are open. And I've heard, you know, restaurant owners say that, you know, the police are basically going to have to come in and shut them down before they quit. You know, because that's their... That's, that's their, their livelihood. livelihood. Yeah, exactly. That's their livelihood. Yep. I mean, these I know small business got, owners. Our big one here in town, Mary Jane's, she shut down. And I'm, I'm sure it's killing her business. She's only been open for two years, three years, I guess. Maybe a little longer. That's a great place to eat, too. Yeah. I, love, I love their burgers. Yeah. I've seen, uh, what's the other here? I know Aaron said he was fishing the Big Bass Bash. Tierra said I broke a rod the last time in Egypt trying to, trying to get unhung. Yeah. yeah. It's usually that usually happens, and maybe this is what happened when you when you uh, it's kind of like your back going out. They say when you're you know your back when your back goes out, it's usually not what you're doing right then. It's something that you've done prior right. to that, leading up to it. You just assume that it just happened. It's kind of like with your rod breaking. A lot of times, it's you've thrown it down on the um, you know oh the God. top of your boat yeah. or something. And that's what I figured happened in mine. I just cracked it or busted it at some point or whatever. St- I, who knows. Like I said, I've had that rod for a long time. It's it's done its duty and pulled in some of my biggest fish in the last. And you got your money years. out of that oh, rod. Yeah. yeah. Still though, Rick had a good question on here. He said, "Have you guys fished any city park lakes, private ponds, golf course ponds, where you have really caught big bass?" I mean, I just caught that big one at Legion Lake. Yeah, he has. I, I haven't. Uh, the lake I was fishing yesterday is a small city park, and I caught. I caught about a seven out of there. It's been several years ago, but this lake, just like the lake Greg is talking about, is is stocked with trout in the wintertime. So there are big fish in there. It's just um, 
probably not a lot of them, but it's just a matter of going out there. I need to start throwing some a little bit bigger stuff out there. I was thinking I'm, that's that was actually the first place I threw the S waiver, mm -hmm. and I, I almost put it down and never pick it back up again because I seen so many fish follow that bait and never commit to it, never even nip at it, nothing. And I, I was getting to the point. I mean, I just I would go by the boat and run it down the side of the boat, and you kind of like you fish for musky, you do the figure eight. I was coming down as far as I could and just watching them and they would not attack that thing. Huh. And I, I got so aggravated. And then I think it was, uh, I think it was tactical bass and I'd seen was explaining about how they'll come up like that, but they won't hit, but it shows you where they're at. And I never even thought to throw a follow-up bait after that. And then I started doing it and it worked out pretty good. Yeah. It's good to have a weightless sink on. I will tell you that. Oh man. <laughs> that's a, that's a lifesaver. So many purposes for that. I bought an S waiver. Uh, about a month ago, I bought one of those in a mag draft. Did you get a 168? Yeah, yeah, I got so, the 168 and the 200. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's going to come into play here shortly. I'm going to start throwing that thing around. L uh, T Harris says Illinois has some good city lakes. I've heard about that Marion City Lake. I want to go up there and check that out. That might be a good lesser known video series lake. Um, I know they actually have some small tournaments up there. Hmm. People from Waterloo. Waterloo. Hmm. That explains a lot, Aaron. <laughs> Hank Snow's here. What's up, Hank? Oh, Hank. I don't, even, don't even talk to Hank. <laughs> yeah, was he sending the uh, screenshot of the weather down yeah, there? He yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, He was rubbing it in the other day. He yeah. kept messing me on Instagram, telling me about how rough he's got yeah, it. Yeah, he personally sent me that picture. Yeah. He's, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, and then, and then told me he was working on his tan and... Uh -huh. I said, I'm still up here looking like Casper. Oh, gosh. My wife made that comment T today, actually. My arms are so white. <laughs> we got a lot of the guys that they wear shorts all year long. I'm not one of them, but I need to start breaking them out so I don't hurt anybody. When river fishing, the jet boats are the worst. Mud up the water badly. Oh, oh yeah. I bet. Yeah. I Well, you know what? There's only one place that I think of that we could fish locally here. Would be uh, Wapello that mm -hmm. you have to worry about jet boats doing that, and it's not not too often, but you do see them down there. Uh, uh, take it back, Clearwater. That's yeah. another one when they run up the back. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we don't have it. I not nearly as much as Isaac does. I know, but uh, Clinton says my home water is uh, Lake Seminole, where the Gators outnumber people. Needless to say, jet skis and pleasure boats aren't typically a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. We need to uh, get some kind of northern throw a couple, hybrid alligators. Yeah, we'll here. throw a couple of gators in there. Yeah, at least some fake ones. Huh, get good. those remote control ones. <laughs> <Start swimming around. laughs> yeah, if that was the case. I'd get one from my pond. Yeah. Of course, I guarantee you, my stupid dog would try to eat. He would. She would eat it. I know she would. Yeah, Robert, all the restaurants are carry out right now. Drive through and carry out. They've they've all got signs and same things going on over here, which is, is a good idea, I guess. The banks, even the banks, I tried to get um some loan um paperwork the other day and I had to go through the drive through and tell the lady what I was looking for and she met me around the back with the packet. So they really? all their lobbies are closing the banks as mm. well. Yeah, actually we were just wife and I were just talking about that with the interest rates being down so low i told her we need to go back and refinance and do it again yeah it's a good time i know my buddy he just did it and they just bought their house less than a year ago and they just went back and refinanced again and saved them like 30 grand i'm like holy cow yeah i think it's down there it's around around three percent now so oh, i like think that. he was saying two is it lower yeah. than that okay it's going down quick because i think we're at like four okay and, uh, yeah i think it's down close to two we're talking finance on the fishing show. Yeah. It's good Real life, though. Dick Stroud, he got his boat out of today. You're ready for the weekend, brother. You're ready for the weekend. Vacuum that thing out. Get it ready to go. Old City Reservoir in Sparta, Illinois is a hidden gem. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm i going to need to go check all these out. Oh, man. There's so many little ones. I took my took my, my goodie I found down. Oh, your crankbait that you yeah. polished up? <laughs> yeah, that's six yeah. cents. Yeah, that thing looks pretty good. I thought I was going to have to put new hooks on it. The hooks are great. T. Harris says, I'm surprised no one wants to trade a lure for a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> it's not well, hard to find, man. The toilet paper? Yeah. I haven't had a look yet, so. Yeah. I mean, I, I usually buy, like, the, the huge, the biggest thing you can buy at Sam's. So, we're still, we're down to, like, 
12 rows. I counted them the other day. I got three girls <laughs> start, in the house, man. It goes, say, pretty quick. It, it goes really quick. I'm going to start rationing. Look at Hank. Said, Went out today, didn't catch any bass, but did find a silver blue back rattle trap in excellent condition. There you go, Hank. That's a good rattle trap. Caught a lot of fish on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Seth Dutchman. Um, I've, I have not fished Dutchman, but I have heard about it. The, the bass club I fish in, they used to go there years ago. They go to Dutchman and they go to um, Mermet, I think. And I've never been to either one of them, but I've heard good things about them. Some stores and restaurants won't even take cash, just debit or credit cards because they don't want to handle it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. There was a lady in the uh, Bi State, which is a uh, mobile gas station that I'm in every day. It's on my mail route. And one of the clerks, the manager was telling me a story about a lady that came up and she was freaked out. She wanted to make sure she was six feet from everybody. Um, she bought a 32 ounce soda, gave the clerk a five, told him to just keep the change because she didn't want any change back. And she actually yelled at somebody and said, you're supposed to be standing six feet away from me. You're supposed to be standing. She was just flipped out, man. She must have been watching like, like a back to back to back news programs and it's crazy but i, I mean it's start, serious i'm gonna start telling you in the boat <laughs> six feet away from me. yeah well just a seven foot rod just, just stay outside of the seven foot rod and we'll be all good i just stay away from the cooler i don't care about the distance <laughs> right that cooler laundry yeah look at white whales in the house what's up guys yeah see Stroud. Richard, he only fishes during the week. Man, that's that's the way to go. It's that's nice about my job is I get a I get a rotating day off. So if I'm off Tuesday one one week, it's Wednesday the next week. So most of my fishing is is during the week, and it's pretty nice. I mean, a lot of times you go out there and there's nobody out there, just a couple boats. And sometimes if you go to like Egypt, there's sixty boats. So everybody's retired or doesn't work over there. I don't know what the deal is. And see, Aaron's talking about where he bought his boat. What's up, David? Happy Monday to you, buddy. We just found our second case in Perryville. Oh, really? Yep. Yep. It's gonna start filtering in. They got that. Um, they got the testing station set up in Arena Park in Cape, and What's that's up, David? that's right on my route there. Um, and apparently, you drive in, and they test you for uh, influenza type A and type B. And if you don't test positive for either one of them, those, and you have the symptoms, then they do the coronavirus test. Have you seen the test for that? Mm -hmm. Oh, get a shot in the stomach or something? <laughs> no, it's it's a it's a long swab. They stick it way up your nose. I think I think somebody <laughs> told me Trump was trying to explain it and said they he goes it goes way up in there and then makes a right turn. <laughs> he goes it's bad. It's an uncomfortable deal. Yeah. I've seen them doing it on the news, and I'm like, whoo. Well, no wonder nobody wants to get tested. Yeah, no kidding. Jesus. Everybody was complaining about the anal thermometers. I'd be more worried about that swab. <laughs> <laughs> White whale says he has three in his county. Yeah, White whale. They, they just confirmed the second one here in our town. And we're, I mean, we're not a big town. I think we got maybe 8,500 people. Yeah, something to remember, and I think... I can't remember if Aaron was the one that brought this up, but is, anytime you guys are pumping gas, I mean, this is something I always do because it's just a habit of mine, but gra grab one of those little towels and wrap it around the nozzle just to protect your hand from the actual I can, uh, trigger or whatever. I can tell you a nice little deal about that exact thing is we were leaving for a tournament one morning and we've got a station up here that, that used to be, you know, I take debit card all night long. The mm -hmm. station was closed. We pulled up there and we were filling up one morning. It's like three thirty in the morning, and we look over and there's a guy taking a leak while he's pumping gas there. Mm. Yeah, just going back and forth, you know. I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't go on that side. Yeah, keep a gl gloves or some kind of towel and throw it away. I do. I've been doing that for years, and uh, just you know, the thing we got to remember about all this is we have the flu season this time of year as well. So you should be practicing the same kind of stuff now that you I mean we should be doing this kind of stuff every winter anyway it's just it just makes sense because the flu's flu's bad too yeah i went through that golf moccasin and got to see that firsthand mm -hmm. when i was down there at the the uh knoxville show that was terrible that hit me pretty hard there's a lot of hybrid stuff little hybrid viruses and stuff that you'll get you know i've 
I remember one time I had like this stomach thing and I was nauseous. This lasted for like two or three months. Not enough to, you know, actually throw up, but you just get real nauseous and then you feel okay for a day or two. And then you That's get nauseous enough. That's probably what it was. It's probably what it was. What do they got a name for that? Non fishitis or something. It's something, yeah. Yeah. You just call me Dr. Smith from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a tournament coming up, right? Hopefully. Yep. Is it is it this uh, next weekend? No, not this weekend, but the weekend after. Okay. So where where's that? Ozarks? Ozarks, yep. That ought to be a pretty good one. Where do you guys stay at? Uh Robbins. Okay. Well So it's right by the bridge there. The fit was it fifty four bridge? Or yeah, fifty four? Is it fifty or fifty four fifty? I can't remember. I know exactly yeah. where it's at, though. Yeah, it's right there by the bridge. It's, it's right at right before PB two. Yeah, yeah. They they we've stayed there for years. They I mean they take really good care of us. Their rates are great. Their mm-hmm. Rooms are extremely clean all the time. And they're I mean the boat. I mean what's nice there that a lot of other places don't have is their marina that you pull into and everything where we park our boats. There's security guard there all night long. You can go down there. You don't have to worry about locking your whole entire boat up every single time and doing this and doing that. I mean, there's always somebody down there walking the docks. So oh, it's nice. pretty nice. Yeah. And it's always lit. You don't have to worry about, which most of them down there are. But Well, that that the BFL, Lake of the Ozarks BFL that I fish, the, the I, I caught one fish. I waited in one fish, one spot, actually, which is funny. I'm like, just left Table Rock, and then I go to Lake of the Ozarks to catch a, you know, like a three-pound spot on a Ned rig, but um, the fish were really super shallow and they were hitting a jerk bait. That's so awesome. the, the fish in general yeah. were within like five feet of the bank. They're sitting up there in less than five feet of water. And it was kind of, you know, a few, few jerks with a jerk bait, let it sit for about three or four seconds and to make a few more jerk baits or a few more jerks. jerks. Yeah. Then once it got about 10, 15 feet off the bank, you just reel it in and do it again. That's kind of what was was going on down there. I mean, that's that's what we were seeing. I've done real well with just a just a, either Kai Tech or a Rage Swimmer, anything like that. Just a small swim bait like that for them spots, and they kill that thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've never kind of never caught anything you know decent. So, I mean, they're all decent, but nothing uh, worth keeping for a tournament or nothing. But the watercolor was was great in my opinion down there. You was know, it clear? It wasn't clear. It was stained. It had a good stain. stain to it. I mean, some of the pockets were foot and a half, but a lot of it was like three foot. You know, it was like yeah. to me, it was perfect amount of stain. That's about pretty typical it, for down there. It looked good. It looked really good. I'll say usually by the time we get down there, because we, I mean, like I so said, we always fish at the first of April, and first of April is you know always iffy on rain. But by the time we get down there, it's either rain before or it's raining during or whatever. And it's got a little bit, like you said, a little bit of stain to that water that I think it really helps down there. Because that water, it gets pretty clear down there. Yeah, it, it can. You can always go up in the, way up in the rivers and get, get some stained water if you need it. Like the the Niangua, the little Niangua will, will keep some stain to it. Yeah. But that's a pretty good run from yeah, the yeah. yeah. About probably 17, 18 miles. Yeah, probably. I was fishing up. Um, my, my buddy Greg, who has a house there on the lake, um, he lives around the... I think it's about the 26 mile marker of the Osage. So that's kind of up there close to um, what, what do they call it? Horse, horse track hollow or horse race hollow. Um, it's oh, not too it far from, the, from yeah. the, where the Niagara comes yeah. in. Yeah. There's a real hard bend right, right. there. Yeah. He kind of lives Lynn Creek right up in that area. Yeah. I don't, so, I don't fish that area too much up there. It's a long run for one. And there's not real familiar with it. Yeah. We fished uh the guy that, that my boater was actually staying in Robbins. Um, and we made a run from PP two all the way to the dam, um, on Saturday in that, in that rain and 36 degrees. Mm. It was tough, man. You have your helmet? No, I just, I had my, uh, fleece buff pulled up. Yeah. Got my sock cap on really tight. I just closed my eyes and meditated. And when I woke up, we were there. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, man, I had to think about something else. Cause it wasn't too bad. That's, I mean, it was, why, it was misty and rainy. That's but, why I've got a helmet. Man, yeah. That thing is just, I, I tell people all the time, it's easy to just get on like Facebook uh, Sellers Club. You can find them for 25 bucks all day long. Really? Oh, yeah. That's Good. what I did. I bought that thing. And for driving a boat when it's raining, I don't care if it's in the middle of summer, that is a lifesaver. I used the guys two years ago when it was pouring down rain at Kentucky Lake. And I, I literally, I couldn't do more now because it rained so hard. And he had a helmet. He goes, here, just use mine. I'm like, no, dude, I said, that's yours. And he goes, no. He goes, you're the one driving. I'd rather you get us there safe. 
And I put it on her, and man, I was cruising at 55, 60 mile an hour like it was nothing. Really? I'm like, holy cow. Did it fog up really bad or anything? No, you leave it cracked like this much, just okay. at the bottom. And uh, now mine, I put rain -X on. And it just beads right off and flies right off. It's no problem at all. Mm -hmm. It was pretty nice. My buddy Mike uses like the motocross goggles. goggles yeah. yeah, it seems to work pretty good for him. I just, as, as, as like a co-angler, you don't want to be carrying an extra helmet in the boat. That's, you know. I guess if you're fishing in team term, it's not quite as big a deal. Yeah. Mike said, need to check out Joshy swim baits. I've been impressed with the action and durability. Best swim baits I've found. A little pricey. Hmm. Not as pricey as those 316 swim baits. I'm guaranteed. You that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Which I've seen. Oklahoma's worst anger was, he's got some of them. Yeah, he does. I need to ask him what he was throwing. I'm going to look that up. Joshy swim baits real quick. We'll see what we got here. So while you're talking to them, somebody was talking about the um, the Lake Fork, the uh, MLF Lake Fork. I, I was actually I listened to a couple of Ot Defoe interviews today, and uh, I yeah, I didn't I didn't get a chance to watch much of that footage. I did see um, I can't remember who it was that caught like a was it Justin Atkins that caught that was it a ten eight nine eight or something on a spinning rod? No, it was I, like I, a ten. 10 8, I think. It was a 10. Yeah, because one I, caught a 10 or no. 10 4. I think I caught a 10 4. Yeah. Or Christy caught a 10 4. Maybe it's Christy. One was a 10 a, 2 and 10 8, I think, or something like that. It yeah. was something weird. It's just two nuts. beasts. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see. Joshy Swim Baits. What's Big up, man? Ethan? Thanks for stopping by, man. Uh, a great idea, Gabe. Get my dirt bike goggles out and put them in a box. Yeah, Aaron, that that's uh, like, my, like I said, my buddy Mike, who fishes. Um, Fishes several tournaments this time of year. He that's his that's his way of getting around. I mean, <laughs> you definitely want the driver to have some kind of eye protection. I put my I always just put my coasters on, but after five minutes, you can't see. You can kind of just see the light. You can see the outlines of things, but that's mainly to just keep my contacts from getting sucked out of my head because you're running like seventy miles an hour. Most of these, as a co angler, most of these guys don't have. They have single console boats, so you're taking like it's like full frontal. <laughs> And when they really care about their co angler at that point, yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. they're running as fast as they can. Yeah, you're holding on for dear life, and you know, they're bouncing around, they got a steering wheel to hold on to. And yeah, I, yeah, I've had some pretty hairy runs, you know. Most of the guys are pretty cool. I mean, if you really, really, if they're really uh, ribbing you, you can just say, Hey, dude, you need to slow down, man. Moxon, those uh, big Joshy swim baits, they look pretty good. Uh, nice Tom says tail. the last hour 15 of the MLF was really the most exciting fish this year. Atkins at 10A. Yeah. Atkins at 10A. That's right. Yeah. That's what, uh, that's what I was saying. Like the last, last, uh, hour and 15 minutes, it really turned on for him. Yeah. This comment right here, need a helmet for the bugs in the summer. That's very true. Yeah. There ain't nothing like hitting a June bug at 55, <laughs> you know, and also your GoPro camera and you're going to find this out. When you're running down the lake and your GoPro is up, yeah, you get bugs on it too. I've oh, had great. I got some clips that are trash because there's little like bugs like right in the middle of the thing. Oh man. Yeah. You have to wipe you have to wipe them off every once in a while. Well, I like I constantly carry that uh microfiber towel in there just for that camera. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I got a little bit of a little spray cleaner, a little bitty bottle. Yeah, I I have that in my uh for my graphs too. The same stuff works. Christy caught a 10 8. Atkins caught a 10 11. I need to figure out how to put this in the middle. Yeah, that'd be nice. I guess I could just scoot it over, though. Those actually wasn't too bad. Yeah, those are looking good looking swim baits. Yeah. Nobody else has seen what we're looking at, though, are they? No, I can <laughs> actually, but I can do this. Uh, put this down here. If anybody wants to check out the Big Joshy swim baits, there's the link right there. There you go, man. You're getting good at that. Figuring this stuff out finally. It's nice. So like I said earlier, I got my carpet on my boat and uh I had to quit, man. I started getting a headache. That adhesive stuff is pretty strong. Oh know? yeah. Yeah. It it was uh it was messing with my head yep. a couple nights in a row. My, like uh, hallucinating my dad and giraffes I, walking around. Yeah, my dad and I probably it's been good God over 20 years ago. Um we had redid a little John boat and put nice decks in it and front deck and back deck and uh, redid the entire thing with, like you said, we were even outside and we're still doing that glue and had to get out. It yeah. was terrible. 
Well, I was in my ba my basement garage, and it's got eight foot ceilings. It's concrete on top, concrete mm -hmm. on the bottom, concrete sides. Small, pretty small room. And you know, about a week ago, I used contact adhesive to glue this. Uh, I got some three eighth inch, three eighths inch uh, Protec carpet padding. It's like this big matte stuff. And I had it all cut out and used that contact adhesive. Now that stuff is really hardcore. I mean, it was, it was bad. It, it was, it like leached into the basement, into the family room down there and you could smell it. Um, so I had to walk away from that after about an hour. And then sure, the wife and kids never said anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Sophia, she's, you know how kids are. They got super noses and super yep. vision. She could smell it from upstairs. She was asking all kinds of questions. Um, Tom says, what adhesive did you use? Um, Geez, I don't, I can't remember the contact adhesive. It was something I bought off of Amazon. Um, I think it was a 3M. It was a red can. And then as far as the actual carpet adhesive I used, it was just whatever Menards had. Um, it was just white with blue, blue riding. It was like 13 bucks for a gallon. I kind of screwed up. I bought a little pint because originally I was going to replace the bunk, the, uh, the bunks on my old John boat. And I bought the carpet and the two by fours to do that. And then I just bought a, like a, pint of that adhesive, the carpet adhesive, I ended up selling the boat before I replaced that. So when I started on my new boat, I started laying this carpet and I got about halfway into the front deck piece and I was, yeah. And this was like 10 o'clock at night, everything's closed and you can't just like not finish it. Right. <laughs> so I really rationed it out and spread it out. As, and I, I mean, I barely got enough adhesive to make it work. So it's coming up next, next year. I mean, I hope not, dude. That's why I'm not <laughs> taking it out for like four days. I've been pressing down on it. I got my mom, my uh, wife's rolling pin. I was, I was like, does she know that? Yes. And she said, you better <laughs> not saying, get any adhesive on that. I'm saying, if not, <laughs> so far, found out. <laughs> the handles, there might be a little bit, but I can get that off of there. And then <laughs> just I just got to bring some, in the belt sanders. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I couldn't think of anything else to use. I got a level and I pushed it down really good with a level, but it's kind of weird because that, uh, that carpet padding sticks up really high and I didn't do the whole deck. I just did sections. Of I was going to ask you if you did padding. Under. I did. And it's cush, man. It's nice. Yeah. I'm glad I did it. I was going to do it in the back too. And I, I actually got five more feet, but the stuff's really heavy. I bought like uh, it's 42 inches wide. and It's nine foot long. The piece that I bought. No, it's just the rubber matting. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's made by Protec. Yeah. And it's three eighths inch and it's uh. It's not the the virgin, which is the first time they that they've used it. This is like they've been broken down and rebonded with some uh, with some sealers and stuff, or some bonding agents or whatever. So it's a little bit stiffer than than the the virgin rubber mat. But um, yeah, it's it's weird because your your carpet, like when you're measuring your carpet to cut it, you've got to you've got to allow for that allow for the bends on each side of that. Yeah. It's kind of tricky, and then getting it to to suck tight is kind of tricky. It's not perfect, but it's going to work just fine. But man, I'm glad to have it done. Yeah. Why well, so tired of that? Why was it asking the dreaded question there? Uh, mid April is what I heard as of now. I mean, um, I was just listening to Luke Duncan on the way down here, and you know the FLW is pushed back till early April, but that's not that long, guys. That's two weeks. I mean, I can see it being pushed back again. Like I heard somebody talking about the Big Bass Bash. That's uh, is that the first part of May? I'm thinking for the Big Bass Bash in Lake at Ozarks. No, that's in April. Is it in April? That's yeah, going to be. It's, it's the weekend after I go. Yeah, we or, were just talking about that. It's, weekend after two weekend. I think it's two weekends after. That's going to no. be close. I want to say it's the weekend. It's right in the middle of April, if I th if I remember correctly. I don't. Know, I don't have it on my phone. I usually put it on there, but I wasn't going to fish it. We had to cancel our. I was going out to Colorado for five days. I had. My wife was was going to a seminar out there, like a five day workshop, um, counseling workshop. So we had a trip planned. Is that how to put up for you or put up with you? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> need more five days for that. But uh, you know that got all canceled, which is kind of a bummer because it was going to be five days with no kids. Where my whole, all my responsibilities were to drop her off at eight in the morning and come back and get her at five. And uh, I was going to be able to trout fish for like five days in a row. I was looking forward to that. I got a buddy that lives out there too. He had, he's already kind of getting things lined up, but that got canceled. I mean, that's that's minimal compared to what everybody else is dealing with. But kind of like booth flooring. Think of trying it out. Yeah, Tom, that's it. The original Weldwood contact adhesive. Um, yep. 
Moxon, right is, is that the uh, the stuff you have for your booth that I'm thinking about? Yeah, Aaron said the 17th and 18th. That's what I thought. Hmm. Yeah, Aaron, that's going to be, geez, I don't know. It's going to be close. Yeah, because we go down the 4th four, the fourth, fourth and 5th, I think. It's our tournament, so. Yeah, what, what you got to remember about this virus is it's a week behind. You know, it's like what's happened a week ago is just starting to surface now because it takes it takes several days typically for people to start, you know, seeing the symptoms. And well, stuff. and they so said most people don't even see symptoms. Don't even like get 80 percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. So uh, it's this is just a <clears throat> trying times. Yeah. it's Well, I'll get through. It's just going to take a while. It's not going to be I'm, it's not going to be a two or three week deal. It's going to be a probably a three month deal. I'd imagine before we start seeing the end of the light. Uh, Moccasin, are you talking about the um, – it's the the flooring for boats where they don't put carpet over or anything? I, I imagine that's what he's talking I, about. I thought he – I think he's talking – when he said booth flooring, that's what I think he's talking about. Okay. Yeah, not the same though. It's supposed to I can't to remember be. what that is. You, you've seen the the, the front ends of bass boats that are padded. Yeah. There's no carpet over them. Yep. So I was watching somebody's fishing out on one of those. Um, it's like it would be easier to clean. Okay. I think that's an option on some of these newer boats. You can have that option. Yeah, no, I've seen the the rhino lining on like the ten boats, but yeah, that's what my know. boat has on it. I, it's, I'm sure it's, it's, it's hard, hard on your reels too. I mean, it's not padded enough. Right. Yeah, he said that's it. Yeah. Dang, Robert Daniels breaking out the part number and everything. Holy cow! AutoZone. Okay, yeah, I ordered mine off of Amazon, but hmm. I didn't even check in AutoZone. It's some stanky stuff. It, the, it, it'll kill flies, spiders, whatever. It was, it was bad. I mean, I was smelling it for two or three days. It's pretty intense. I had to throw my contacts away. And But hopefully it works. The carpet's supposed to dry. The carpet adhesive is supposed to dry for, well, it doesn't need, they, they suggest not coming in contact with any kind of water for five days. And I checked it last night. And it was still just a little bit. It wasn't soupy, but it was still tacky. So I'm hoping by Thursday it's going to be good to go. I might run down to Duck Creek. Thursday. I'm waiting for you to break it out so we can go. I know. it's it, You'll like it, man. I'm, I'm happy with it. It's a lot bigger. We just got to figure out how we can do two GoPros at the same time. I got it rigged up. Put put one in front, one in back? Dude, I got I got the nav light poured in the back, and then I got a separate one right next to it just for GoPro. And then in the front, Speaking of which, I got a GoPro uh, port. So we could run three sticks at one time, honestly. Is that your power pack? Yeah. There you go, man. That's nice. Charge a GoPro 15 to 18 heavy. times. Really? That's what you need. So man. you could run all day long. No excuses. No. You could beat somebody's butt with that, too. That's <laughs> yeah. pretty heavy. It's my billy club. It <laughs> pisses me off. <laughs> I'll just throw it at him. Surely that thing would knock him out. Aaron I'm loves fishing. Way. I love fishing, too, Aaron. It's my love affair against my wife, but our health is priceless. That's right, man. That is right. This will all pass. You just got to buckle down. You know, it's funny. Everybody wants to be lazy, and then when they're getting ordered to be lazy and not do anything, yeah, nobody wants to do it. Couldn't know that work. If we'd have known that, we'd have, well, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> I could name a few people. <laughs> there, if, <laughs> I try this on. <laughs> if, you, if you got Netflix, there's a ZZ Top documentary that I watched yesterday. It's really good. I, I would definitely would recommend that. We also watched... Uh, his name Jimmy Kimmel and Justin Timberlake. They do a uh, oh, the the history. Oh, it's called History of Hip Hop, where they do they they lip sync. Actually, they don't lip sync. They actually do a bunch of old hip hop songs, and uh, those, those dudes are amazing. I don't see how if you if you ever watch that, you'll see what I'm talking about. I can't stand Jimmy Kimmel, so well, you wouldn't like it then. No. You like Justin Timberlake or not? I he don't bother me. I just Jimmy Kimmel. I just I don't know. I've just never been a big talk show guy. Now, growing up, you're watching uh, uh, Johnny Carson, you know, back in way back. Yeah. You can still watch some of that stuff. Yeah. They have uh, him and it's not grit. It's one of those channels like an antenna channel. Yeah. Jay Leno was, you know, he's yeah. okay, whatever. But Carson was cool. I, we watched several of those recently. And what's cool about it is they had such long, um, Basically, the time in between commercials was really long. You know, they let yeah. the they let it go. You kind of got into it. It wasn't like two minutes in a commercial and then two minutes in a commercial. 
I mean, the little segments were like six or seven or eight minutes long. It was, it was pretty refreshing. So he's got a quick, good question. How big are the SD cards you guys use on your GoPros, and do you bring three or four cards with? What do you do? Okay. So first of all, I've got a 64-gig card. Now, in my in my opinion, that's about all I need for a full day. I can, I can use that no problem at all. But I do uh, looping. So I'm only going to do every five minutes. And I can save, you know, five minutes at a time. So you can go a long time on that, and it does it no problem at all. Um, which you've got a bigger one, right? No, I use sixty-four gig cards. But I use a twenty-minute loop. When you do, when you yeah, do you're five, doing twenty minute, yeah. When you do a five-minute loop, does it break it into one-minute clips? Yes. Okay. okay. So if you don't, so which is nice about that is when you're on the water. Let's say you start getting to a point you're starting to use up all your card, which I mean you'd have to do a bunch. I mean you'd be catching probably 80 fish if you're okay. using the five minute clips if right. you're using the 20 minute it goes by a lot quicker quicker right but i mean you can go back and like he was saying at five minutes is broke down into one minute segments so you can go back in there and go into each part that you save and delete the four before that and only save that one minute yeah or if you think it was longer not save two minutes you know whatever it's real easy to do so yeah i use uh Somebody Andrew Dice Clay, man. I remember when that guy first came on the scene. <laughs> the guy was rowdy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think who what somebody told me they were using a 228 gig. Well, and I I couldn't understand why they needed something that big. Now, if they're doing 4K, I guess. Yeah, 4K. So I, I I'm using I use 1080. P. Yeah. That's what I shoot in. Are you still doing 1080 or are you doing 2.7? I I tried the 2.7. And the 2.7 works okay, but I like the 1080 better because of the faster. It's I can bring it down to the I think it's 90 frames per second. Or I'm using 1080 60 frames per second is what I'm using. Yeah, I don't remember what it's. I, I use the higher frames per second, so if I want to slow a clip, clip down, it doesn't miss anything. It's real smooth. But um, the 2.7 I was using, but I I couldn't tell the difference. I yeah, really couldn't. It really. It just it renders more. a lot slower too. I mean, at least yes, for me, it does. I don't. My computer's really old. That's another thing, Ethan. Is uh, is when you when you go to start editing these videos, you got to make sure that you got a computer that can handle all mm. that data, or it'll just drive you nuts. I know we, we talked um, yesterday, the day before, and, and he was trying to upload a video to YouTube using a Wi-Fi connection, and he was like six or seven hours in well you've seen what i went through yeah, before it's it's, it's it's you can't do it it's it, just aggravating it's almost not worth doing until right. you can until you can get at least something that's going to work for you it's super frustrating you'll get burnout on it you won't you won't edit properly because you know how long it's going to take you'll just get lazy and skip stuff not lazy but just be frustrated um but i carry i got two cameras i got um hero black fives that's all my videos that you're seeing that's Everything within the last year or so has just been on the, the GoPro Hero Black 5. Um, so I'll carry, I got four cards with me. Typically my handheld camera, um, I, I don't use, I won't use hardly any data on that because that's just a matter of me talking while I'm going to the lake or if I see something interesting, maybe a fish release. It, it doesn't have a lot of time on the card. But then my stationary one is the one that I will go through. Um, sometimes I'll go through a card and a half. You know, if I'm if I had a day where we're catching a lot of fish, you know, so it's I would say you'd want at least you want two cards if you just got one camera. You know, that, that'd be my recommendation. Yep. And 64 is fine. I think that just that's just smoother. You know, you get you get these bigger cards and there's not there can be too much data on there. So I, that'd be my recommendations on that. Not to mention you've got a, you have a lot to go through on just one card. Right. I mean, and, and once you get a little farther into it and you start breaking down, like, you know, the clips, I just did a video Saturday or uh, Sunday, Sunday's video. And there were probably, I think it was 48 clips altogether or 50 clips that I had. Mm -hmm. So you had to go through every single one of them and get out the footage you want. So you go to an even bigger card and have 350 clips. I mean, that's a lot of stuff to go through. Yeah. And, and the thing I like about, I did the five minute loops like you're talking mm -hmm. about. But the thing, the thing that I like about the 20 minute, so, so the way the 20 minute loop works is it busts that 20 minute segment into four or five minute segments. And then it, so it'll go, it'll go to 20 minutes and then it'll start recording over that first five minute segment. So 
at any time you stop it, you stop that whole segment and then you start over. The thing I like about the, the 20 minute loop is a lot of times you'll catch conversation or you'll catch a bird flying by or, or you'll, you know, they'll be um, just trolling around the dock or around the lay down and stuff that at the time doesn't seem like you would want to stop your camera and, and restart it. But when you go back and you're looking for some some like scene footage, some kind of filler stuff that just to bring life to the video, a lot of times if you know, if I would have did the five minute loops, I, I wouldn't have, I would have you know, actually deleted that or I wouldn't have went and stopped it. It was just got recorded over. So that's, that's one thing about the 20 minute loop that I like. So where are we at here? Oh, uh, Mox is talking about the power packs. Uh, yeah, yeah. He said he used them all weekend at the show. They're nice. I got a smaller one. It's like a 5,200 milliamp hour. And it'll charge a GoPro like once or twice for sure. Yeah. I just wanted something big enough that I could run, you know, for at least eight, nine hours a day. Yeah, that thing, you ain't gonna have to worry about anything with that. No. See, Tom said Jack Parr before Johnny Carson. Now you know how I'm old though I am. Yeah. Jack Parr. <laughs> okay. Just figured out seven hours. What was Ethan talking about? Oh, he's talking about loading that video to, to YouTube. Just f figured Holy it out cow. seven hours, and it's not a – geez. Ethan, I will say one thing is good. If you got any way to hook up to an Ethernet cable, that would be the way to do it. Yeah. I mean, we've – you know, Gabe and I both have went through this live stream deal and loading videos and stuff like that. We've I mean, we've went through the struggle bus with many of them, and – you know, Ethernet cable is one thing. It just it's a must have. Um, having good internet is another, obviously. But um, a computer that is a huge, huge bonus. It makes life so much easier. Yeah, yeah. I, I just in the um, in the software you use can make a difference too. But um, it it all kind of works together. It's it's synergenic. I mean, if you've got one thing that's not able to keep up with the rest. Basically, it only works as fast as your slowest, slowest, whatever product. So it's, it, it can get frustrating, man. Yeah. Asleep of the Real says, howdy. Glad to join. Listen to the camera. He uses a GoPro 8 Hero 8 on a yellow stick with a 128 gig card. I could film straight for four and a half hours on 2.7K. Holy cow. There you go. I like the yellow stick, man. I just got that. Uh, it's been about three or four months ago but i should have got it a lot earlier that thing's really really nice you don't have any cords in the way it's just direct power see and I, the way i've got mine rigged up i don't really it's not a big deal to me but it's ran straight to the battery on the boat so mm -hmm. i've got nothing to worry about there but the yeah. only thing that the only thing that worries me is you know fishing in the rain i've got to get some of that putty mm -hmm. so yeah i think once i get the putty i don't think i'll have anything to worry about but yeah i should have bought that um, they had the package when I bought the yellow, the yellow tech stick, you know, it came with the, I, I got the little light, the little led light, which is, I was kind of disappointed. It's not near as bright as what I thought, but they had the package where you can get the light and you can get the connectors and, and the silicone putty and stuff. And mm -hmm. I didn't get that. I should have probably got that, but yeah, yeah. I think that silicone putty is pretty cheap, but I think it's 15 bucks or something. It's, re, it's reusable though, but it's, uh, oh, man, I don't want to do that compared to a, um, $360 camera. It's definitely yeah, worth spending an extra 500. Or 500. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. That's it's outrageous. Uh, white. Well, hang on just a second. I'll get you the, uh, the link to that. What, uh, sleep at the real, what, um, editing software do you use? That's a question I get a lot. Um, it's interesting. Everybody has different ones they use. What, and, do, what are you using? I forgot what you're using. Sorry. What your, your editing software. I use uh film more nine. Okay. It's like, um, I'm trying what I paid for it. I don't even remember. Um, I can look it up. Hang on just a second here. Let me, uh, uh, why will ask are the battery packs you guys are talking about I waterproof? I don't, mine's not, I don't think they are, but, um, I'll put this down here for you. Maybe. Okay. Maybe not. Let me, uh, let me get rid of this. Way too big. <laughs> Why well says uh Mox and Lure Ziploc bag and some tape. I guess he's talking about you don't get good video out of a Ziploc bag. That's the 
I mean, well, he was talking about taping it around the outside of it, which is a pretty good idea. So he's saying, you know, cut this out right here because this is all waterproof. The whole thing is, except for when you have this open. Yeah, you're not going to get direct water shooting into it, but you're still getting right. moisture build up inside right. of there. Anytime there's a breach in that outside barrier, you're going to get but, but it's like better than nothing. Saying, he was saying, you know, cut this <clears throat> out and tape around that. And yeah. Then have the rest of it in that Ziploc yeah. bag. Would yeah. That, I mean, that's definitely better than nothing for sure. Well, I was trying to get you on here, but uh, what I can do is just this. Uh, so Sleep at the Real says he uses Vegas originally when I was doing stuff for the Outdoor Channel and just stuck with it. What are you using? That's what I'm using too, Vegas. I'm using the, um, it's the, the movie, what is it? Movie Studio Platinum, I believe. Um, I like it so far. I mean, it took me a little bit to get used to it. It does... It does what I need so far. There's a few things that I would probably like to upgrade to, just just mainly titling stuff and font stuff. But I don't get I don't get too I don't overproduce my videos too much, so it, it works for me. But it's been good. It's been good software for me so far. White well to answer your question, um, the music selections. Yeah, it does have music on it, and it's got a bunch more you can download. And we were actually talking about that one night about using different music and stuff. The thing is, with those programs, anything you use off there, you don't have to worry about it being copyrighted. Mm -hmm. So that's something you really have to watch and pay attention to once you start getting monetized. Because didn't yours get flagged right away? Yeah, I've got several that, yeah. that have got copyright violations from earlier. Um, you know, and it's funny, a lot of it, some of those are just little, I just put a little 10 second clip of something. I could have used anything. It yeah. wasn't even really that I like that song so much. Right. I was just looking for something. I pulled it up and then I, you know, I rendered the video and dump it on YouTube and it says copyright violation. Then they give you the option to go back and pull the music out. But at that point you just have this like silence and it would screw the video up. So yeah, just YouTube has tons of tons of songs. They got all different genres. You can go through there and you can, you can pull whatever you want and not have to worry about it. Sleep of the Real says, one more thing. Looks terrible, but take a beer can koozie, cut a hole in for the actual screen. It looks, keeps it nice and waterproof. Hmm. That's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all, because if you put it on the other end, it'd be perfect. Hmm. I'm still thinking of Silicon Putty's way to go. Yeah. I, his idea there, I, I like not this one, but one of the neoprene ones. I could see that working really well. If you put that over, and that thing fits in there pretty good. Too, yeah, and it kind of sucks up tight on yeah. there. I think he's uh, onto something pretty good there. That would definitely work. That's a, that's a great Especially idea. Especially if one of them neoprenes. Hmm. You just have to cut out a hole for your that's external power supply. Yeah, well, yeah. Or, you, or could you run it? You could probably run it through here somehow. Well, what he's saying is like one of the neoprene ones is closed at the end. I guess it's a good idea. I haven't thought about that. I just don't know how that cord would work right there, though. Hmm. So White about. Well says he's uh, recently used Epidemic Sound for new music. I've not heard of that yet. What is it? Epidemic? Yeah. And like I said, you just got to watch so they're not copyrighted stuff. It's the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah, people don't like that. It's it's kind of I don't know. I, I get it. You put all this effort into making stuff, but some a lot of them will just they just want you to recognize their band. So you can use their music, but in your description, you just have to give a link. shout out to the group or yeah. whatever. Which that's cool. I like that because that way he gets their music out there, and you still get to use it. And I wonder, I wonder how that works for like cover bands. I mean, do you? I, I don't know, man. I've wondered that too. I, I would say it's the same because it's just a copy of the original song. I, I'd say the copyright award would go to the original writer. Well, of like that you song. guys, like you guys do your, you know, your covers right on Little Drummer's channel. Mm -hmm. I wonder how you do that and don't get. Well, he he's not monetized. He doesn't get any monetary value, any any kind of monetization for really? for that. Yeah, all that. I mean, he's got a lot of subscribers too. Yeah, he's got like fifteen that or no, yeah. Is it 15 or 20? He's got 15 something 15? thousand. Yeah. And he's not monetized. Mm -mm. He can't because it's all copyrighted material. He's wow. just covering songs, just doing it strictly for fun. Wow. No. 
No, mm. and he's had a he had one band. I think it was Kansas, the band he did a he did a cover of. Like, I'm not sure what song it was, and it might not have been Kansas, but it was one of those older rock bands from like this the 80s. And they personally told him to take it down. They got upset, and he uh, you know, he petitioned it and got it put back up. But to me, it was it was like a. Uh, you should be just happy that somebody was still playing your music and keeping it going, <laughs> no you know, Who's <laughs> Kansas. <laughs> and I'm not sure it was them, but it was yeah. a band like that. that yeah. Uh, Sleep of the Real said, yes, it was, it was the closed in and put, he's got a 90 degree cord. So it fits fine. Okay. I need to look and see. That's a good idea. I don't think I haven't seen a 90 degree cord for the hero eights. Hmm. I haven't, I mean, don't get me wrong. I haven't looked here lately either. That was right when they first came out, but. All right, Whitewell. We'll see you later, man. Thanks for stopping by. Yep. Good luck fishing, man. It's coming. Jared K says he's thinking about starting a channel, so I appreciate the advice. Yeah, sure, Jared. Um, if you got any more questions, man, um, look us up on Facebook. You know, Backyard Bass and Ten Horse Monty. Yeah, Shoot our Instagram. In. Our Instagram too. Instagram, yeah. 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 I've, I've I've come to find that's probably one of the easiest ones to deal with as far as messaging. Instagram. It's Instagram. Yeah, it's a whole lot. And I don't know if you've dealt with the uh, the page manager on Facebook. You know, trying to deal with like your personal page, your your you know YouTube page on it and everything else, because it's hard to get messages on there sometimes. And a lot of times, I don't ever even know they're there. Yeah, I had uh, oh, what's his name? The, the younger kid used to come on there all the time. Um, all Star. Uh, dang, I can't even name now. But uh, All Star was messaging me. He did it like three days in a row, and I never even knew he messaged me. Hmm. I just happened to be going through Facebook, and I seen this weird notification. And I went down and looked at it and I had to go through several different little things to find it because it was on the other page. And, uh, and then every time he messaged it, it was no notification or nothing. So he started doing it on Instagram. It worked a lot better. Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm still kind of new to the Instagram thing. So asleep at the real says, can I put a link in here? If so, I will find it and show you. Not sure what link, what link you talking about? Oh, he's talking yeah, about the Coley Cup or what? Or yeah, the, you can put a link in there. Yeah, go right ahead, dude. No problem there. I'll say I can go look it up here. Yeah. I so wish we had the uh, two different screens here. We could actually show what we're, what we're looking at with a camera. Yeah, that'd be nice. I mean, I, I put a... I'm going to have some Lake of the Ozark stuff coming out probably Wednesday and then Saturday. I got videos from the BFL down there. And then I got, <clears throat> I got a... I think it's going to be pretty cool. I think you guys will like it, but it's a, it's me, Mike, and Matt sitting around the table at Greg's house. And not this Greg, no, different Greg. Yeah, and Greg, Greg from Lake of the Ozarks. Um, and we're just talking. There's some really cool stories in there about just different tournaments, um, different ways to catch fish on different lakes. But it's it's about 47 minutes long. It's us talking, and we're talking about it's talking to Ethan about rendering. That thing took like eight hours to render on my computer last night. What? Yes. Cause it's so long, you know, normally you're doing like a 15, 20 minute video. This was like 47 minutes. So That's for some reason it, it was, it was a lot longer right. than I thought. It just, it took forever. But, um, I think you guys will like that. This you'll, you'll enjoy it. If you, if you get time, it's kind of one, it might be one of those deals where you have to watch it in a couple sessions, but there's yeah. some pretty funny stories in there and there's some, actually some really good tips. Some stuff. So, that I okay, you were talking about rendering on yours. Do you have to render everything before you do it? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I set up a timeline, you know, on, on my on my software, and then I make a movie and bust it into MP4 format. So that way, you know, it's basically internet friendly. Yeah, so that's see, the rendering part. Yeah. See, Mike Phil Moore does it all for you. Oh, does it? Yeah. That's what I was asking. I was like, man, it's kind of odd. Yeah, I, can, I got that whole like, set. Let's just say. The, uh, seven minute video. Um, I, I get it together. I do all my editing and everything else. And then I'll just, I'll export it, which now, which I know the newer version, you can do it on now again, but for a while there, you could just export straight to YouTube, but that something happened with film war. They had issues. I mean, they sent out emails and everything saying they knew the issue was there, but um, the newer version, if you download it and upgrade the new version, it's fixed. But with what I do now is I export it to my computer and it takes like a seven minute video takes about mm, maybe four minutes. Hmm. And then it takes about four minutes to upload. Jeez. No, you know, it's just quick. Yeah. 
No, my, I mean, I got to do my timeline, get out and get my video like I want it. And then I render it to MP4, MP4 format, which takes a couple hours. Wow. And then when I dump it on YouTube, it doesn't take that long. It only takes like 15 minutes or something. Holy cow. But my computer, I'm telling you, is like seven years old. Yeah. So that's a lot of it. Yeah, that's an old. I, it's it's I'm really sure. slow. I mean, I'm, I'm working with bare minimal parameters. No, I've no. got just I enough. Was, I was working no, with you, bare minimal. No, you didn't have bare minimal. You had like subpar, <laughs> way subpar. It was terrible. Mine's in between what you got now and what you okay, have. Okay, yeah, that's, but I it, can see that. It's just enough to get it done. And I've been looking Holy hard God. at a computer. And I'm I'm really curious to see how much faster it, you know it'll. Oh, I'm yeah. But well, you've seen on this, you know. Yeah, and like I said, I didn't go all out and spend two three grand. I mean, this is only. I think I spent what eight or nine. Yeah, I think nine. Mm -hmm. I got on sale. Man, I was looking at some last night, and there's some like some straight up big time editing and gaming computers for like three or four grand. Like, oh yeah, you know, PCs, desktops. Yeah, it's My nuts. God, that's what I like about this one, and it's small enough that it's only this and a power cord. Yeah. So if you want to take it somewhere, it's not a big deal, you know. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So, well, I think we're gonna shut this down, guys. Please appreciate yeah. you uh, spending some time with us. Um, we'll try to get a theme, maybe next next week or you know next time we do this, maybe get a, a pre spawn, and we'll you know guys think about some questions and comments, and we'll get on here and we'll just try to stay we'll, focused uh, on that and bust it out. I say you, you know? bring your. Top five pre spawn baits. Okay. I'll bring mine. Okay. Yeah, we kind of go that. through that. Maybe go through one on one, explain where we like to use them, about, you know, maybe what to look for. Yeah. Maybe yeah. color, something like that, whatever. Because it's know. it's going on right now. I mean, we're in the pre spawn. So, yeah. So, so. hey, there's a little drummer yeah. right there. We were just talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> it was all good. It was all good, man. We were just <laughs> talking about, uh, um, copyrights and stuff on YouTube videos. So, um, Ethan, great to talk to you, man. We're going to let you guys go. Well, there's this deal. Okay. Guys, Jay Basson. Good night, brother. So many Moxing. Number. All right. Let's, uh, let's save this right here. Okay. One second. Craig's going to say something real quick. All right. Um, where do I want yeah, to Jeremy, we were talking about that. I couldn't remember the name of that that uh, band that you did a video on, and they got a little bit. They got their panties in a wad over it. Um, I'm sorry, trying to. It's a kind of a funny story. All right, not, not funny, but serious. All right, we done. Yeah, I think we're good. <laughs> All right, we're done, man. We'll, right. we'll see you guys next week, man. Appreciate it. Yep.